Indeed, it is the 20th day of September 2022. Good morning. This is KBC News Check. We are live from the broadcasting house here, here, here in Nairobi and also on all our social media spaces. And, uh, well, the dust has settled for the 2022 August polls and uh, President William Ruto has hit the ground running, but some people could argue that he was drawn at the deep end because high cost of fuel, the high cost of living, the COVID-19 pandemic, we just, uh, uh, just, uh, we're just surviving. And he still has to always, always mind Kenyans, despite the fact that there are some Kenyans who did not vote for him. There are some Kenyans who opted not to go to the ballot, but he is the Kenyan president and he's doing everything that he can at the moment to ensure that he actualizes all his pledges. Good morning. This is News Check and for the next two hours or so, or so we will be focusing on a number of issues. A lot of things are currently happening in the country. There is the, the MPs and that and the senator's induction as we also await the biggest question who is the majority leader are the numbers opaque indeed that is also a conversation that we are going to be having and uh, to jo joining me on set on my left actually both of them are doctors and are also lecturers let's begin with my immediate left, we have Dr. Churchill Saoke, who is a governance and leadership expert, and also he is a lecturer at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Dr. Karibu. Asante san. Thank and just you. next to him, we have Dr. Fred Ogola. He is also an author, and also he is a leadership and governance expert, and also a lecturer at the Strathmore Business School. Thank you so much indeed for joining us kindly. We are live on our social media spaces for comments, suggestions, questions, or even where you are watching us from. We, we highly recommend and highly welcome. Dr. Karibu Sana. Thank you so much. A lot has been happening. Maybe where do we even begin? Maybe we can begin with what happened yesterday so that we may just put everything to rest, the barrier of the queen. And uh, looking at uh, the, the queen, the longest reigning monarch in British history, and the son king philip now they're quite different in terms of how we have seen them before even the king died we saw indeed yes it is the the fruit from the tree but quite different from how things um how the queen used to to to, to do her things vis-a-vis -vis what his son now who is the king actually the final words as we we, we bid call her it a generational goodbye. change mm -hmm. Because this is going to be a very, very, very totally different generation that you'll see here ruling uh, uh, UK. Uh, remember that uh, he's now the head of Commonwealth, and Commonwealth as big as United States. So if you can even just put together the size of the GDP that actually they have in <coughs> even Johnson, mm -hmm. will this be something that will be his concern, or that is what is called the British shame, or if you like, the British uh, democracy? Mm -hmm. So you will see a lot of things coming up. And unfortunately, remember that they don't always put their policy like a head of state by saying, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You will see them subtly. They have to do subtly and keep the royalty uh, ongoing. So those are some of the things we can foresee, and mm -hmm. we hope that it will be good for Kenya as usual. Always we have to say it will be good for Kenya. Yeah. And yes. uh, uh, Churchill, Commonwealth has over 50 nations. In regards to the foreign policy, what are some of the things that we are hoping that uh, the new king will adopt? Because 50 nations is quite a handful. Yes, you see, first of all, long live the king, mm -hmm. and may, <laughs> <laughs> may, the, may, may, may the soul of the, the, the queen, Elizabeth, to rest uh, in peace. I think the, the point is that when you look at the transitioning of Britain and United Kingdom from uh, even the, their exit, the Brexit, their mm -hmm. exit from the European Union, it was a very strong indicator that the United Kingdom and the Northern Ireland were trying to realign their foreign policy into anchoring, into trying to capitalize on the Commonwealth mm -hmm. and trying to see how do they, how can they be able to, to endear themselves in the global, global politics and global economy through their influence in the Commonwealth. So, my expectation is that as even as you, as we 
as, as the king comes in, there'll be a strong focus in the Commonwealth nations and maybe to see how they can be able to build their, their, their geopolitics around that. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and of course, as, as, as Dr. says, with the, with the new energy, you know, the, the king, when he was a prince, there was a lot of, uh, he was engaged a lot in charity work mm -hmm. and, and, and as opposed to his other prede predecessors. So we expect a lot of this, of course, now have him being at the head of state, this is likely to be scaled at a newer level mm -hmm. and maybe he might want to uh, to aggressively try to improve the you know the foreign policy of of, of of the UK around the Commonwealth nations and also try also to rebuild their ties with the United States with the, with the aim of extending their 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 interests around around the world specifically they have been very key in trying to make the world adopt capitalism because that was the you know the uh, the, the ideology that is being championed by democracy and things like that so <coughs> and, and because this is sort of what really serves serves the interest of, of, of britain you know the more capitalistic the world is the more the world is prone to them being able to endear their businesses around the world mm -hmm. and things like that so the the king has got uh, quite, uh, he has work to do, especially with regards to uh, making Britain be the, the champion of geopolitics and, uh, and economics around, around the world. If you see, the other thing that I also expect is this special relationship between the UK and the, and the US. Mm -hmm. You know, that is something that has been there over history. You, mm -hmm. all, you actually even saw the kind of special treatment the, the president of the US was given. Mm -hmm. he was the, I think he was the only one who was allowed to go in with the, with the convoy mm -hmm. in, the, in St. George's Chapel. And it's because the, the strengthening of that relationship Will, we still expect it more in their foreign policy, in the king's foreign policy, mm -hmm. because it is that relationship that actually has, has, has been able to champion a lot of uh, uh, distribution of power across the globe. Yeah. Yeah. And indeed, uh, long live the king, just as you, as you have said. <laughs> and uh, back home now, we have at least uh, the, for the first 10 minutes, we have been able to touch on that. And away from that, now when we come back to Kenya, we have our own policies as well. Yesterday, the, the induction for the senators... Uh to clarify the same on Wednesday during its presentation. Various speakers during the first day of the induction called on the legislators to endeavor to make the 13th parliament more productive. Parliament through legislation and oversight and judiciary through interpretation and application of the law. We cannot interpret laws in a manner that promotes a social transformation if those laws were not designed to achieve social transformation at the point of enactment. If you want to be a great debater and a hawk-eyed member in relation to oversight matters, attend committee meetings and participate in committee meetings. It will make you a much better debater on the floor. On Tuesday, members will familiarize themselves on the National Government Constituency Development Fund. The rule of law, human rights, constitutionalism, and democracy. Dr. Ongoy. Indeed, that's uh, just an extract of what uh, was transpiring yesterday at the MP's induction that uh, started yesterday. And uh, listening to what the leaders there had to say is that uh, matters, SRC matters, allowances can take a back seat. But when Moses Wetangula talked about nobody should be interfering with your allowances, we had a lot of jeers and also <laughs> we had a lot of um, reactions in, in line. But these MPs knew very well that these allowances were scrapped. Mm. So they cannot say that SRC is uh, turning the back against them. And they know very well that SRC is the only mandated body to ensure that they look at the allowances. But truth be told, if at all these allowances are scrapped, the country will save up on 8.2 billion each election cycle. After five years, we have saved five, 
1.52 billion Kenya shillings because it's also trickling down to the county assemblies. <laughs> Would like to pick your mind on that. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you see, these are, these are things that are expected of politicians. I mean, you, the, the, the first things that politicians will want to take advantage of is find ways of capitalizing on where they can be able to get their monies and uh, take back uh, as much money as possible because the, 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 there are other realities that are around these countries and politics because, <coughs> you see, when, when Kenyans typically see politicians, they see money. Yeah. And uh, where do the politicians get the money? So sometimes some of these allowances are where the politicians get the money. So it might look evil, but mm -hmm. some of it is driven by the nature of the people that the politicians are leading. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, SRC had the best interest mm -hmm. of the country in wanting to save money mm -hmm. uh, by, by giving the allowances. And I'm sure that their timing, mm -hmm. they <coughs> timed it in a way, uh, they brought it at a time when, uh, when they were expecting that, uh, you know, the new people who are coming on board will have the same thinking as you're saying, that you know what, <laughs> you know what you're coming to be paid for, so you, once you, are, you have been elected, please accept what has been offered by SRC. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as the politicians come, they have institutional memory, they know how much was being paid by their to their predecessors. Mm -hmm. So they will most likely fight back and that is what we, what we are going to expect them, uh, what we are going to expect them to do. But I think the, good, the, the, the most sober thing to do is to st really strike a balance and see what really is. Because I, I also feel for the MPs in as much as we, we, want, to, we want to reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, people see politicians as banks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you've been, you've been campaigns, and you, you've seen people see politicians as banks, and mm -hmm. and you know it reaches point where these people also really use a lot of their monies, and I think it's it's good. I'm not really supporting it, but it's good mm -hmm. to be also fair in as much as we we fight we fight them on some of these allowances. The other thing I might I may want to say is that whichever the amount of money that is going to be given to them, mm -hmm. the other thing that SRC should be ready for is that it's going to have a replica effect. Them. And they know very well that SRC is the only mandated body to ensure that they look at the allowances. But truth be told, if at all these allowances are scrapped, the country will save up on 8.2 billion each election cycle. After five years, we have saved five, 8.52 billion Kenya shillings because it's also trickling down to the county assemblies. <laughs> Would like to pick your mind on that. Yeah, you, you, you see, these are, these are things that are expected of politicians. I mean, you, the, the, the first things that politicians will want to take advantage of is find ways of capitalizing on where they can be able to get their monies and uh, take back uh, as much money as possible because the, 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 there are other realities that are around these countries and politics because, <coughs> you see, when, when Kenyans typically see politicians, they see money. Yeah. And uh, where do the politicians get the money? So sometimes some of these allowances are where the politicians get the money. So it might look evil, but some of it is driven by the nature of the people that the politicians are leading. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, SRC had the best interest mm -hmm. of the country in wanting to save money mm -hmm. uh, by, by giving the allowances. And I'm sure that their timing Mm -hmm. They timed it in a way, uh, they brought it at a time when, uh, when they were expecting that, uh, you know, the new people who are coming on board will have the same thinking as you're saying, that you know what, mm -hmm. you know what you're coming to be paid for, so you, once you, are, you have been elected, please accept what has been offered by SRC. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as the politicians come, they have institutional memory, they know how much was being paid by their to their predecessors. Mm -hmm. So they will most likely fight back, and that is what we, what we are going to expect them, uh, what we are going to expect them to do. But I think the, good, the, the, the most sober thing to do is to st really strike a balance and see what really is. Because I, I also feel for the MPs, in as much as we, we, want, to, we want to reduce the cost, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, people see politicians as banks. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
you've been you've been campaigns and you you've seen people see politicians as banks and mm -hmm. and you know it reaches point where these people also really use a lot of their monies and i think it's it's good i'm not really supporting it but it's good mm -hmm. to be also fair in as much as we we fight we fight them on some of these allowances the other thing i might i may want to say is that Whichever the amount of money that is going to be given to them, mm -hmm. the other thing that SRC should be ready for is that it's going to have a replica effect. And there are other, uh, also other agencies that are going to want to be increased mm -hmm. the allowances. MCS, mm -hmm. other state employees will also clamor for increment of the allowances because the cost of living has also gone high, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're increasing this to the elected of saved five eight point five two billion Kenya shillings because it's also trickling down to the county assemblies. <laughs> I would like to pick your mind on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you you see these are these are things that are expected of politicians. I mean you the, the, the first things that politicians will want to take advantage of is find ways of capitalizing on where they can be able to get their monies and uh, take back uh, as much money as possible because the, 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 there are other realities that are around these countries and politics because you see when, when Kenyans typically see politicians they see money. No. And uh, where do the politicians get the money? So sometimes some of these allowances are where the politicians get the money. So it might look evil, but some of it is driven by the nature of the people that the politicians are leading. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, SRC had the best interest mm -hmm. of the country in wanting to save money mm -hmm. uh, by, by giving the allowances. And I'm sure that their timing Mm -hmm. They timed it in a way, uh, they brought it at a time when, uh, when they were expecting that, uh, you know, the new people who are coming on board will have the same thinking as you're saying, that you know what, mm -hmm. you know what you're coming to be paid for, so you, once you, are, you have been elected, please accept what has been offered by SRC. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as the politicians come, they have institutional memory, they know how much was being paid by their to their predecessors. Mm -hmm. So they will most likely fight back and that is what we, what we are going to expect them, uh, what we are going to expect them to do. But I think the, good, the, the, the most sober thing to do is to st really strike a balance and see what really is. Because I, I also feel for the MPs in as much as we, we, want, to, we want to reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, people see politicians as banks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you've, been, you've been campaigns and you, you've seen. People see politicians as banks. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it reaches point where these people also really use a lot of their monies. And I think it's, it's good. I'm not really supporting it, but it's good mm -hmm. to be also fair in as much as we, we, fight, we fight them on some of these allowances. The other thing I, might, I may want to say is that Whichever the amount of money that is going to be given to them, mm -hmm. the other thing that SRC should be ready for is that it's going to have a replica effect. And there are other, uh, also other agencies that are going to want to be increased mm -hmm. the allowances. MCS, mm -hmm. other state employees will also clamor for increment of the allowances because the cost of living has also gone high you know mm -hmm. if you're increasing this to the elected officials mm -hmm. you also need to do it to the other people so it is something that you know uh, is on the table for the policy makers to mm -hmm. make a very wise decision on to on to looking at the pros and the cons and i think that the it will be good to not just to go into it that you know we are returning back the allowances and not seeing the impact of that on the other on the other on the other you know on the other officials or the other state or public officials mm -hmm. and also the impact of that on the the politicians themselves mm -hmm. yeah. indeed and and doc just as doc is saying that um, he did does not support but uh, looking at the coin on the other side mm -hmm. you see that it's more or less like something that is more or less necessary for the MPs yeah. but looking at 8.2 billion in a country where we just out of a COVID pandemic, looking at the global recession, the high cost of living, 
this would have come a long way. And mark you, mm. the speaker is talking about nobody in their rightful mind. More or less is speaking with finality, more or less like they have said, no, 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 you cannot touch our part. Yeah. But at the end of the, uh, the day, Kenyans are watching and Kenyans want the, the, the wage bill to come down. And not only that, Doka said, other, other Kenyans would want, I also work for government, I would yeah. want a pay rise because of the high cost of living and a number of <laughs> uh, factors. So first of all, we start by saying, what can you do with 8.2 billion? You can build at least level four hospital in the 47 <laughs> counties fully furnished. That's what it can Just do. that five years? Yes, fully furnished. Without a hassle, every equipment, diagnostics equipment, everything will be in place. And in fact, <laughs> if we save that money, mm -hmm. we can actually end up with that. So if every election time we save that money, you cannot have any scarcity of supply hospital. But now, let's first ask a question. What's the genesis of this money? Uh, allowances, sitting allowances. It was meant because members of parliament used to abscond coming to sit. They used to just wait for the, the, the mandatory requirements of sitting uh, sessions just to ensure that they, they, only, they, they are given that allowance to motivate them to come and sit. Mm -hmm. Secondly, all the, what they talk about the, 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 the mileage claims. If you drive your car to parliament, they pay you a certain amount of money for the kilometers you drove. Mm -hmm. So all these were meant to encourage them to come. Mm -hmm. They have a salary, but you have to encourage them to work. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, my brother, you work for KBC, we work for government in we, we for you work work in the university when i sit in a board meeting with my boss can i demand for a sitting allowance i cannot so what we are trying to say is that what is wrong with this whole thing is like some member of of the of citizens are digging fertile soil and uh, getting something others like me and you we are digging rocks to plant so we are digging a harder rock to plant. For them, they are digging fertile soil. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to bring this into perspective, let's ask the bigger questions now. We have been told the wage bill is too high for this government. Mm -hmm. Today, I saw in the Star magazine, mm -hmm. it cost around 506 billion shillings a year to pay salaries. How do we bring that down? Members of parliament don't want theirs to be reduced. Who wants theirs to be reduced? So no if those sitting at the top mm. who enjoys all the privileges says they cannot cut a penny, a penny, this is 5,000 shillings. You don't want to cut it. Now, those down there are the ones who need to cut. Now, do you know the main problem we have in Kenya? is not poverty. The main problem we have in Kenya is, one, inequality. Because if those are the top ones who earn very high salaries, mm. do you know 5,000 is somebody's monthly salary? Well, for you, it's a sitting allowance on top of all other allowances and your salary. Mm -hmm. So inequality is the issue. So as you continue making them keeping their money, you are telling them, I saw the speaker saying, we are living in an we want to live in increment, meaning that every day we want to increase their packages. Is the economy also growing at the incremental level? Are the people down there getting their salaries increased? Because if they did, there's only some, <coughs> someone complain about inflation. Mm. Why do you complain about price of fuel if your salary has gone up? So for me, if we begin by saying we cannot cut from the top, who will accept? And I can give an example in parallel to Kenya Airways. When Kenya always saw that the operating cost was very high because of very expensive pilots and all the staff, mm -hmm. the board proposed that they need to cut salary. But the question was who cuts their salary? The board did not cut their salary. Mm -hmm. The senior management did not cut their salary. They asked pilots to cut their salary. Pilots were not, they are going on strike. You saw that. Mm -hmm. The employees were going on strike. So this won't happen. Let us lead from the front, from top down. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. But now, when the, if this is bottoms up, whereby we will cut salaries down, then the money comes up. Maybe mm -hmm. if that's the bottoms up model, <laughs> maybe that's another story. But to be honest, mm -hmm. let us be honest here. William Ruto has inherited the economy at a very tough time. In fact, that's what I wanted to respond to you very definitely. That he has, it, not that the economy is bad. In fact, I don't like the fact saying there's no money in Kenya because mm -hmm. inauguration is taking place, travels are taking place, so there's money. The truth is that there's some money. Mm -hmm. But the point is that there's a tough moment. So with all his promises, it is like when you go for honeymoon with your wife and you tell them, I'll make you the happiest woman, 
when you land in the country back from honeymoon you discover the economy is not working mm -hmm. you've lost your job your friends have left you or your customers who was very good for you maybe has gone bankrupt so these are challenges we have to address for so i would like to tell kenyans to be a little bit patient mm -hmm. with the government not that they should not question the government mm -hmm. we'll still keep them check but be patient i call this what is called focus poverty mm -hmm. for for prosperity mm -hmm. like when we we're in school i'm sure your father maybe sold a cow my father sold a cow my father worked so hard he never had a lot of pleasure because he was educating me mm -hmm. but he knew after educating me i'll take care of other my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and he's rich mm -hmm. though without a bank account because i have a bank account and i'm a professor now so if we borrow money to pay for our bills today and we live large we shall eat our future we shall eat the future of our children mm -hmm. and the future of our grandchildren but if we will live within our means so that we don't still borrow and eat the future of our children mm -hmm. then we are going to create an economy oh. which is sustainable mm -hmm. and i think that's how we need to look at these dynamics of cut oh. now yes. so that tomorrow can tomorrow we may better. be able to uh, but uh, uh, hold the thought because uh, we need to cross over to kisumu gentlemen we've been talking about uh, the induction and uh, <laughs> Doc, you had an issue yeah. uh, as to why the senators should go to Naivasha. Yeah, why yeah. should the MPs yeah. go to that? <laughs> yeah, you see, when I, when I took up my job as a professor in Strathmore, mm -hmm. they took me to a classroom mm -hmm. and showed me this is the blackboard, mm -hmm. this is the chalk, mm -hmm. this is the duster, these are the <laughs> locals of students. Mm -hmm. They inducted me in Strathmore. I'll be working in Strathmore. Now, we have the Senate House here empty. Mm -hmm. We are doing induction in Naivasha. I don't know whether the Naivasha is not charging them. Mm -hmm. There is no cost to that. We are inducted, we are inducting senators in Naivasha. Members of parliament are being inducted in Safari Park. Mm -hmm. My question is, how does Safari Park and Naivasha Hotel represent parliament and senate? I have never been to parliament as a member of parliament, but mm -hmm. that question they should answer. Unless they tell us why, because mm -hmm. for us we are trying to cut cost. Mm -hmm. And how can we cut a cost if we are just spending this way? And I'm sure that maybe the president is not happy where he is that this is taking place because he knows that he is an economy which we're being told is so broke. Yeah. So if it's true that it's so broke, mm. why are we spending money when we can avoid it? I'm sure that Senate, no one will charge them for rent for even one minute. Mm -hmm. The hotel rooms will not be needed because members of parliament have mortgages already given to them. Some of them were living in Nairobi before they went to campaigns, even there. So I'm sure they can have cheaper ways. You come from your house, spend time mm -hmm. with your family, mm -hmm. go get induction, come back, meet the clerk where you're going to work. You'll be shown this how the microphone works, this how the standing orders work. When you stand here, you do this. That's my thinking. Maybe yeah, I'm okay. stupid, but I'm trying <laughs> no. to say <laughs> Actually, that Doc, it does not make sense to me. Uh, that's a very interesting way to look at it because indeed we are struggling as a country and the, the, the president and, the, and his deputy have talked about we don't have money uh, at Treasury. But away from that, looking at what President William Ruto talked about when he was swearing in the six judges, he said that the rule of law will be observed. This is something that I've observed because today at Safari Park, the MPs will be taken through the national government CDF, which incidentally the same same courts declared it as unconstitutional and the head of state said that we are going to be observing the rule of law which one of one one of which is obeying court orders well you, you see that is um, that that statement was very is something that was very good to the ears of the of the of the members of elected members of parliament and uh, it, it's a struggle that parliament will really have to uh, to deal with and and most likely it might put uh, the, the legislator and the judiciary at, at war because you see this is this was this was one of the driving forces of, of the members of parliament to even wanting to get into some of these political positions and mm -hmm. and you see at the point when the at the point when the the ruling was delivered it was in the middle of the campaigns so most likely what might happen maybe the president in his goodwill might uh, 
might have you know now he has a very good relationship with with the with the judiciary and he might constitutionally there are still provisions you know there are still appeals that can be made and when those appeals are made then 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 they they ensure that that decision is reverted so those are possibilities that the executive has at their at their disposal to use to ensure that that CDF thing is is done mm. within the legal framework Indeed. And uh, I'm informed that uh, the, indeed, uh, that swearing in from Kisumu is continuing. After that, they will be tasked, the elected leaders will be tasked with electing a speaker. And still on speakers, Doc, yes. looking at what we've seen actually in the National Assembly, we saw Kenya Kwanzaa marshal its numbers and um, fronted. Moses Masika we Tangula. Mm. We are seeing we are likely to see the same thing happen in counties of which we run a risk of not having the, the, the best leaders as speaker. Remember the speaker is the third in command in the yes, county as well. Yes, yes. So of course you see now a national assembly because of the national representativeness, those seats are more competitive than the county level. Because the county level you might find for example in Kisumu you may find nearly a bigger chunk of the MCS are mostly ODM. If you go, for example, to Washingishu, most of them will be UDA. So they could be looking for signals from the UDA leadership mm -hmm. on whom should they want as a speaker. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, you could see, for example, there could be some of those night, uh, night, nighttime meetings, midnight meetings, to be given direction as to whom to elect. And you can see it does not look as agitated as the one we saw in Parliament. Mm -hmm. So most likely, uh, county government, and I think that's what we are trying to ask our leaders, that will it be a time when we can elect a leader who is worth it? Because, for example, I'm not trying to talk about the current Speaker of National Assembly, but the question is, was he elected on merit or it was a political exercise? Because sometimes performance, no, for example, politics trump performance. Mm -hmm. Someone can have a political heavyweight and win. For example, in Kisumu, depends on how you related with all these same CAs. Uh, sometimes they can even be handouts even given at night or the political guru can give direction. Mm -hmm. So this way maybe things can fall. For example, Mombasa, you may find again, ODM can dominate. So all the blue, all the blue our counties, you'll realize that mostly ODM will have the, mm -hmm. their way as speaker. Mm -hmm. And all the yellow, mm -hmm. uh, yellow counties, mm -hmm. you may find UDA will have control. Just like, for example, uh, maybe unless it is difficult, like the one we have now in the National Assembly, where Parliament looks blue, but it's orange, uh, it's yellow. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting thing because that is uh, something that. Um, they're even talking about seeking the law, the constitution, the stand, standing orders in regards to who is the majority in the House. And I believe this dilemma is being brought about by UDM party, which has also moved to court to, to, to try and say that we are not quite in that marriage. I was not really married to Azimio, that is UDM, led by Ali Roba, <laughs> but uh, I was coerced. I was coerced. <laughs> we were coerced. And that is why we joined Azimio. Mm. And some of them have even talked about, because every time you find that um, something is not favoring politicians, <laughs> they talk about amending the law. The law is very clear. You have to be in that political yeah. marriage yeah. for at least three months after yeah. the election. But yeah. they're saying we were coerced, yeah. so it wasn't really a marriage. <laughs> of con it was more or less a marriage of convenience. Yeah. Doc. I think that is uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they want to, to change the laws as soon as they get. It's, an, it's unfortunate to say that you are forced into marriage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you yeah. see, it shows if, if, it shows if, it shows if, that you 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 didn't you don't think through. And I think <laughs> even your level of leadership acumen mm -hmm. is questionable. I think I mean the law is pretty clear mm -hmm. that the, the the party with the majority and that majority has been defined even by the. The register of political parties mm. that that the, the agreements that were made prior to the election are still standing so i mean those are things that parliament should not even begin debating around because uh, as a matter of fact uh, you know the the government already has can be able to have majority of its business mm. in the house even yeah. even without having that 
position of uh, majority leader in mm -hmm. the National Assembly. Because you see, all these other guys that are now talking about forced marriages, they can implement that forced marriage business in, in government business, mm -hmm. all right? When, when there are certain laws or miscellaneous amendments <coughs> to be pushed, they can support government. But on matters of who becomes the leader of majority, I, yeah. it's very clear in law. Mm -hmm. So you, you wanted just, to, yes. Just wait, wait there. First of all, Doc, let me tell you, <coughs> the issue of forced marriage is not just a political thing. It's also a religious thing. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm married to a wife, isn't it? If I want to leave her and I go to, to the Catholic Church and the priest and prove to him that I was not in freedom when I got married. <coughs> Remember, if you quote your marriage, all they usually say, do you freely take, <laughs> and the word freely is important, isn't it? Do you freely take so and so yes. in marriage mm -hmm. as wife? To love and to serve, remember that, that oath? Yes. The word freedom is important. So there's one thing, there's knowledge and freedom, very important. Mm -hmm. If there's a way you can prove you are coerced, then the Catholic Church do not consider that marriage took place. They say annulment. Mm -hmm. Annulment does not mean marriage took place and we are divorcing. It means that the context of the marriage did not even make marriage happen in the first case. Mm -hmm. There are things about knowledge. If there's something I didn't know about my partner, maybe mm -hmm. she had another husband before we met, or she had children, another marriage which I didn't know. And I now prove that who, the person I knew, when I was saying yes, I do, is not the person that now I know you can actually nullify. So mm -hmm. we may forgive them, let them mm -hmm. prove on what was the lack of freedom, mm -hmm. because you know, here we are not here to bash people. We are scholars, mm -hmm. and I believe that there could be a way they can prove they were coerced. Yes, and, and if no. they can mm -hmm. prove they were coerced, mm -hmm. then we can say, okay, now you're free to leave. But, but now, <laughs> on the issue of uh, majority, mm -hmm. in paper, like my brother has said, Azimio has majority in parliament. Mm -hmm. In the stomach, when I mean tumbo economy, mm -hmm. you moved to Karen, you took a handshake, mm -hmm. and you took photos mm -hmm. in stomach. Actually, the uh, Kenya Kwanza has majority in parliament. Mm -hmm. On the house or the floor, on the ground yes. or the floor, which is government business, mm -hmm. whether as a meal like it or not, the fact that the elected speaker and they get more votes for the speaker, uh, Kenya Kwanza won it, in the ground. Kenya Kwanza has majority. Mm -hmm. So now, which one is sustainable? Do you want to sustain the stomach? Do you want to sustain the ground business? And I agree with my brother that in transacting government business, Kenya Kwanza will always have their way because they have more MPs in their stomach and heart supporting mm -hmm. uh, Kenya Kwanza. Mm -hmm. But on paper, which will disappear after three months, mm -hmm. that's something to go. But let me focus on what's important. Mm -hmm. According to me, when Parliament meets tomorrow, and Moses Wetangula meets with the team, he has to make a ruling, which is important. That he has to make a Solomonic ruling, like my brother says. Is he going to follow paper? Is he going to follow the stomach? Is he going to follow government business? Mm -hmm. And remember, we have precedents before. In, twin, in 2002, when Marende was elected Speaker of National Assembly from ODM, when Raila, who was the leader of ODM, was in opposition, and Kibaki was the president, mm -hmm. there was nothing that ran wrong because of leadership of Marende. He said, I am not a speaker of ODM. I'm the speaker of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. So what I'm requesting my honorable members of parliament, mm -hmm. let us get majority leader of parliament, not of Kenya Kwanzaa and not of Azimio. Mm -hmm. Let us get minority leader of parliament not of any other coalition. The same thing will go to all those posts and all those committees because they are here to serve the country. Let us put politics aside, wait for five years, mm -hmm. we shall revisit those matters later, but for now, guys mm -hmm. are hungry. The person suffering of hunger is suffering hunger now. Yes. Sleeping outside, now. No mm -hmm. clothes, now. No mm -hmm. school fees, now. In mm -hmm. a hospital, now. That should be the focus. Yes. All these things mm -hmm. are just hearsay side shows, but the most important thing, parliament need to function, mm -hmm. and if parliament do not go through this right to the extent that they need to go and ask the court to tell them, mm -hmm. they would have lost their freedom. If they cannot only provide leadership within parliament, court will tell them what to do, and that may not be a good thing.
It is. And, and, and still on the same, as we wait for the, the Speaker of the National Assembly to make that Solomonic decision and uh, tell us exactly or clear the opaqueness in terms of the numbers, because we have the numbers, yes, but uh, in, in Parliament it's quite something quite uh, different. And in marriage we say, till death do us part. In terms of <laughs> such coalitions, we talk about till three months are done. Yes. And we are seeing the three months period being... Uh, ages for the politicians are talking about we need to amend the laws to the point that if I don't feel comfortable with this political <laughs> marriage, I can exit at any time I want. Mm -hmm. That perhaps could, uh, could, could align and uh, clear out this opaqueness that we have. This, it's, it's a very dangerous, uh, <laughs> it's a very dangerous uh, step to make. Mm -hmm. Because you see, the law is very funny. The law is like a double-edged double sword. Today, it's on your side, tomorrow it's against you. So it's very important that any decision mm -hmm. or any legislation that they make has to have objectivity and not to be subjective. The moment we become subjective and focus changing of laws to fit certain convenience as is now, then it may end up being, you know, when the law that you make becomes the one that takes you to the guillotine. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very, you have mm -hmm. to be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, you know, today it is, uh, today it is, it is you who has the power and the instruments. Tomorrow it is your academy who will have that, that power and instrument. Mm -hmm. And the same precedent that you use today are the ones that will be used against you mm -hmm. in some future time to come. Mm -hmm. So it is important that the that the that the, the the speaker of the national assembly sees beyond the convenience of time and see the impact of the decision he is going to make in other future mm -hmm. uh, parliaments. Mm -hmm. Because you see who never know who, who knows maybe at some point he might be uh, the president and at that time, he may, he may be in the same scenario that the opposition is. And he might need to have uh, his business in the house. And then he realizes that, you know, a decision that I made in the 13th parliament is going to affect me how I did of majority. Mm -hmm. So that objectivity is very significant for our national leaders mm -hmm. in any decision that they make, in any legislature that they make. Uh -huh. But before we go, they yes. need to understand the basis of the <coughs> argument of the other side. Mm -hmm. You know, Raila Odinga ran on Azimio as a coalition political party. And he was the only one on the ticket of Azimio. Mm -hmm. All the other guys ran on other parties within the coalition, mm -hmm. while William Ruto ran, ran on UDA. So that argument is that UDA, on which William Ruto ran in, has majority in parliament and therefore they can reign. And mm -hmm. they said Azimio do not have a single MP. Mm -hmm. So the numbers you're putting there brings opaqueness. That's where the opaqueness comes from. <laughs> but you see what's happening. According to the Political Parties Act, mm -hmm. Azimio is a political party and there was a coalition agreement which was signed, deposited by them, and therefore Azimio can bring the numbers that it has mm -hmm. as a coalition and use that divide into a majority. Now, they are saying that the members of parliament, when they did the Political Parties Act, mm -hmm. did not correct the standing order. So according to the standing orders, uh, the, the Political Parties Act has not been able to be uh, aligned mm -hmm. to the standing orders. So uh, Moses Wetangula can use the standing orders, which is in his favor, mm -hmm. to declare who is majority. So we are waiting to see whether he will go with the constitution, mm -hmm. He will go over the Political Parties Act. Mm -hmm. He will listen to the advice from the political uh, from the from the political uh, uh, party. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the political uh, pol party. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, he's going to listen to the standing order. Yes. So which yeah. response will we take? And he said mm -hmm. it will create precedence. So that precedence we are waiting Just like the see. Apex Court has done in uh, numerous cases. Yes. A and still on the same, and because of the interest of time, let's assume now Azimio gets it, the numbers that we are seeing here. Mm -hmm. Azimio takes it. What happens after three months? There will not be the majority. No, no, no. Actually, but it's one and a half it months. Is not, now, this almost. is not an election that you do. It's a seat you win before. You see, the time I stood on KBC mm -hmm. here, and I said, the petition in Supreme Court has been won or lost before it begins, mm -hmm. which means that majority in parliament has been determined before parliament sits. So mm. after it has been, is the declared majority of, of, of leader, it will only upon Azimio to change it as time goes by. And it won't be like another day we again constituting parliament mm. and determine it. Mm. It is once and for all. 
So once they get it, they'll get it on paper. But doing business in parliament, it can actually change. What if tomorrow the, the opposition has something more interesting mm -hmm. that, for example, others want to get? Mm -hmm. And remember, in this whole coalition, we are not even controlling the independent, independent members of parliament because the Political Parties Act recognizes a caucus mm -hmm. of independent members of parliament mm -hmm. with benefits and with the voice on which they can voice in the House. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that all of them ran to other uh, coalitions, mm -hmm. and I call it stomach. Stomach yeah. economy. Okay. <laughs> and because of the interest of time, and it's something that uh, a lot of Kenyans are waiting for, is the cabinet. Mm. It has, not, has not been named yet, mm. and judging from the way things are, of course, the fuel subsidies, and uh, the president <laughs> talked about <laughs> we are not going to be having subsidies on consumables. Mm. Economic outlook of it, you may argue, yes, indeed, that is the right way to go because subsidies do gobble up and eat up into some of the monies that should be directed elsewhere. What are we likely to see and what would you want to see judging on the one week that the, ofi the, the Office of the Presidency has started in terms of the fifth regime that started as soon as he was sworn in? I think I, think I would advise the President to have his cabinet as fast as possible because it's, uh, it's sometimes important to work with, uh, it's easy to work with a concert of counsel mm -hmm. and uh, professionals who can be able to give you guidance on some of these issues and just find ways of even realigning your, 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 your manifesto in a manner that it can be implemented. So that, is, uh, that should be a matter of urgency. And uh, that will even help in trying to find ways, better ways of, of, of implementing some of these things like the, the subsidies in view of prevailing legal frameworks that exist and the, the, economic, uh, the economic circumstances that prevail. Mm -hmm. and, uh, because sometimes there are certain, uh, as an elected official, you are prone to make some, uh, some populist uh, statements mm -hmm. that appeal to the electorate at this time because peop you, know, you want to feel that people already seeing you're working but in terms of actual implementation it's not it's not practical so when you have this council of ministers and the technocrats who has the PSS they'll be able to give you uh, council and you will be making national decisions that are based on bureaucratic uh, on, 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 on that have come through bureaucratic processes and I think that is something that is of that is of uh, importance as is as, as is now mm -hmm. yeah. yes and uh, well, doctor, my point is, to add on the same my point is just this eh? mm -hmm. um, first of all subsidies according to me is not a bad thing mm -hmm. but is it a bad thing no it's not because of the fact that there's a short-term solution to a current problem, and there's a long-term issue. Mm -hmm. If my head is under the water, and I can't breathe, like some <coughs> Kenyans are dying of hunger now, they are sick in hospital, they cannot afford anything. They need a subsidy to keep them going, but this is a short-term thing. The long-term solution is those long overhaul plans the president has, for example, mm -hmm. guaranteed mineral returns. You know, you cannot plant fertilizer today to give me a life. Because mm -hmm. if you give me fertilizer, can I eat fertilizer? Mm -hmm. I need food today on my stomach, even to go to the chamber. If I'm in bed, I'm sick. I cannot get out of bed. I have no food. If you bring me fertilizer, have you helped me? No. But so there should be short-term solutions to the current problem. And I agree with the president, subsidy is not sustainable. <laughs> so in the end, they should come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. We should be able to help you come out of this challenge. Mm -hmm. And then th lastly... I think we need to understand how government operates. And because I'm an expert in government, let me explain to you. Mm -hmm. The president normally makes what is called executive order. Remember, President Uhuru Kenyatta once said, I want every child to have a laptop. It was taken literally. But then, after president has taken an executive order, ministries, which are yet now to be appointed, mm -hmm. ministers come with what is called a ministerial policy to execute the executive order from the president. Kibaki said, I want free primary education. Mm -hmm. So Ministry of Education had to come with a, a, a policy to execute mm -hmm. the executive order. Mm -hmm. Then state department, headed by PSS, come up with an execution framework on how to execute the ministerial what? Policy. It's called mm -hmm. MDA. Mm -hmm. E M D A. E executive order. M ministerial policy. P, now is we talk about, uh, D, we talk about departmental execution framework. Mm -hmm. Then A is an agency 
inside the department mm -hmm. that will do it, which comes now with an execution mm -hmm. that cow counts on the executive order, okay. ministerial policy, ah. a departmental execution framework, mm -hmm. and, uh, and state department execution. So if you don't have that order, mm -hmm. it does not work. So mm -hmm. whatever you had pronouncement from the, the, the head of state, mm -hmm. They'll trickle down in that order if at all they are following that same framework, okay. which is allowed by midterm plans, okay. Vision 2030, and the rest. All right. Um, let me give you a minute each as we also cross over. We'll be looking at climate change. How far can you walk? Some people want to walk from here to Egypt. Well, we'll be talking about that in the next hour, Doc. Yes, I, I think mine is just to um, to say that you know the government has as big as as they begin working, we need to be objective, and I still I, th I will still emphasize the need to, to, you know, the campaigns are over, and we are no longer in an, an electioneering season. Mm -hmm. So the issue of we against them is over. It now us Kenyans, and we need to find ways of of, of whatever we do, we see every Kenyan. Mm -hmm and not the yellow and the blues. Indeed. Doc, mine is the fact that uh, uh, William Ruto has taken office. He's working to form the government. Raila Odinga, I saw newspaper saying he has accepted to be head of opposition, and also he is down to work trying to set up the opposition into place. I think that uh, if we believe Raila was a very strong candidate, he's a strong candidate, but now he's going to be form a strong opposition. Mm -hmm. William Ruto was a strong candidate either because these guys were neck to neck. Remember the numbers here that uh, uh, nearly 7 million people voted for Raila, nearly, mm -hmm. and nearly 8 million Kenyans didn't vote. That is 15 million people. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruto got 7 million. So our work is to stop the issue of those who didn't vote, those who voted Kenya Kwanzaa, All those right. who voted Azimio. Yes. We remain Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say, Kenyans go back to work. Yes. Stop spending insult on social media mm -hmm. who lose how they lose that's none of your business mm -hmm. you're not a candidate you didn't invest money and you're done with the work. Work. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> support the government okay thank you so much dr Churchill so okay governance uh, expert and also a lecturer at the j KU Act, and also Dr. Fred Ogola, who is also a governance expert and a lecturer at the Strathmore Business School. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your insight. Yes. We are now taking a short, quick break, but when we come back on the other end of uh, this show is that um, partly why we are experiencing a high cost of living inflation is because of climate change. Well, we will be put, putting that into perspective in the second hour. We'll be joined by two gentlemen, and they are planning to walk from here to Egypt. I will be telling you why. We'll be back in a moment. Hello.